Hello and welcome to my series on the Bevy Game Jam number three. This is the devlog for the first day of the jam. I don't intend on making videos for every single day of the jam since I have other things that I need to do, so I won't necessarily be able to work on my game every day. But I do hope to get the chance to make a few minute video every day that I have significant progress made on my game. For those of you that aren't aware, the Bevy Game Jam started on the 1st of April, although voting on the theme has been available since the 25th of March. The theme for this year's Bevy Game Jam was side effects. The other two options that were potentially floated to be chosen from were Hive Mind and Fungi. I don't know if this is necessarily considered cheating, but I looked at the scores before I went to bed last night so that I could sort of gauge what the top three would be and think of an idea that would fit, regardless of which of the themes was picked for the jam. Interestingly enough, the theme that stuck with me was the Fungi theme, and it's actually the one that I was thinking about what kind of game I would like to make for. Unfortunately, unlike my previous attempt at a bevy game jam, they didn't end up picking the theme that I already had the game in mind for. But Side Effects is a pretty good second. Because the game I had in mind for Fungi was sort of a farming game where you would grow your own little funguses that would then, you know, mutate over time. So instead, with side effects, I thought, why don't I keep that gardening theme and make it about a wizard and his garden where he grows different plants to brew potions. And depending on what plants you use, depends on the potion you get. And certain potions will have side effects. I've wanted to make a farming game for a really long time, but I've never really had the motivation or the concept for the game to drive me to actually achieve it. So hopefully this baby game jam, I'll actually manage to make some kind of prototype farming game. This will also serve as a good testing ground for my Dinosaur Tycoon game, since I intend to implement the plant growing in the same way I'm going to implement the dinosaur's genetics. So this will be a good opportunity to see what kind of emergent behaviours I can expect to arise from a somewhat pseudo-genetic simulation. The first thing I did after looking at the theme and deciding what type of game I wanted to make was to go over to ChatGPT and ask it to come up with a nice title, just because it's always nice to be able to refer to your game by name, as opposed to a lot of my other projects where the name of the project is based on the concept, hence my Untitled Dinosaur Tycoon game, and its file is called Hex Game, because it was going to be a hexagon grid. So with the prompting to chat GPT that I wanted a farming game where the wizard brews potions with the ingredients from his garden, it suggested Herbal Alchemy. And I think this is a pretty good name for a game, especially considering I didn't really have to put any effort into coming up with it myself. Now that I have a name, I can go over to GitHub and clone myself a copy of the Bevy Game template. This will set up basically everything I need in order to compile my Bevy game for Mac, Windows, Linux, and most importantly for the game jam, web, since most people don't tend to download the games onto their computer and would much rather play a web browser version. The template requires you to do a few to-dos and update the name of the game in the template so that it all functions correctly. Once this was done, I had to go in and start working on making the game template into 3D, since the default settings is 2D. This didn't take too long, but did have some fiddly bits where I had to work out where things like the camera were being spawned so that I could change them from 2D to 3D cameras. Once I had everything set up to work in 3D, I started working on making my camera movement. Originally, I was planning on doing a fly cam like I normally do when I'm developing games. But instead, since Bevy fly cam wasn't up to date, I thought maybe I should implement my main camera now. My idea was to do a sort of MOBA style camera where you can pan and rotate around the center obstacle. And then you can click and drag to move the map around underneath you. This took some getting right and a lot to get to feel correct. I ended up using an approach very similar to the fly cam, where I kept track of the player's yaw position and their pitch. Then using some trigonometry, I could work out where to place the camera and then tell Bevy to point the camera at zero, zero relative to the player's position. This would result in the camera pointing downwards from where the player was. This also meant that it was quite easy to clamp the player's pitch between zero and 90 degrees, meaning that the player can't infinitely spin around and also can't go below the ground. I actually feel that this camera turned out really well after I managed to tweak it into a state that it works. There was a lot of issues with things such as not going in the right direction or just having certain controls inverted. After setting up the camera, I decided it would be quite useful if the player themselves could set what sensitivity they had for the different controls, since some people like snappier controls than others. I did this using Bevy PKV, which is a cross-platform crate that allows you to store persistent data using key value pairs in Bevy. This is an incredibly useful crate since it allows me to store things on web as well as on your computer. This is incredibly useful since in all my previous games I've just used STD file system in order to access the user's files in order to save things like user preferences. But this crate allows me to do that without needing to know what operating system 
they are on. Meaning a lot of things can be made a lot simpler and WASM works right out of the box. So I worked on a small settings menu that allowed the user to go into the settings and update their mouse sensitivity and their movement speed. This was then persistently saved to disk so that when they reloaded the game, those settings would be kept. The final thing I did before making this video for today was create a small test map in order to see what my world would look like. I did this by using my personal wave mesh collapse crate. By making some custom meshes in Blender, I was able to quickly put together a small map that would allow me to spawn a hexagon table and little island that would be able to be tessellated across the map. The idea is that in the finished game, you will be able to spawn in different types of pots for different types of plants. And since they're a wizard, they could have things like small islands in amongst all their tables without needing to justify it by any other means, but it's magic. I like how my little island turned out and hopefully it'll be even better when I have like tiny palm trees that grow out across multiple stages in the middle of the little island. You will then be able to collect things like leaves, bark and fruit from the trees in order to brew your potions. This is a little bit ambitious, but hopefully I can get it done before the end of the game jam. I'm a little bit concerned since I don't have the next basically three days in order to work on the game. But hopefully once my work's finished for the week, I will be able to dedicate more time to the game jam and also hopefully will be live streaming some of my development. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my live streams when I do them on this game jam. And I hope to see you there. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.